Anyway, let's get to the main event so we can get past the main event. And we knew something was going to happen. We didn't exactly know what, but the flavor of it, obviously, you could smell it from last week. And I was afraid with the people involved that regardless of how it happened, MJF might get some on him just because of the others. But um, I think he managed to avoid getting any of the dreck on him necessarily in this, in this instance. But the match is Garcia against Ostrich for the Intercontinental title that Ostrich gave him, but MJF has earlier said, kid, I want to be in your corner. And they set this up from the start of the show. I guess the question was, and we don't know yet because they haven't got the, because of the holiday, the ratings are not out yet. But would they hang on for two hours through the rest of this program to see what MJF was going to do? I think that's the cliffhanger that we're going to... Or would they leave and come back? And by the way, and I apologize for the helicopters behind me, but by the way, this was also the longest overrun I believe they've ever had. It was a full 15 minutes. It seemed like it took a while, yes. But anyway, they had a match, and the match between Garcia and Ostrich, that may be the story for for Tony's Uncle Ding. But everybody just wanted to see what MGF was going to do and, you know, how this was going to impact. The, because they're all nominally baby faces. Again, they love Will. He's just got there. They've built up Garcia as an honorable young man, so no reason to dislike him, and MJF's the star of the show. So it's, again, they worked themselves in a situation where everybody's a babyface, and what do you do? In this case, at least it worked out at the end. So they had a nice match. They Garcia just needs a physique, a gimmick, a personality, some size, and age. Uh, otherwise, that he's got everything. And, you know, the, so they have the match, and then by the time that it's halfway over with, you've got Will is getting heat on Garcia. And the fans are, che are starting to cheer Garcia because they put him in the sympathetic underdog position. But now you've... It, it, I understand if you were pushing somebody that was going to get over and be in the main event fucking echelon that's what you would do and apparently they think that's going to be garcia the problem is what they're doing is they're burying the newest million dollar acquisition by having people cheer his opponent who they may put him in main events but he ain't going to sell the tickets to be there it's not going to work right now he's a darling of the indie crowd which means you've left out everything that will make him a star and you're focusing on whether he can do the wrist locks. So the bland lump of clay kicked the shit out of the greatest wrestler in the world. But then the greatest wrestler in the world would recover instantly and kick the shit out of the bland lump of clay. So we had that going. And then did you like when Will was a flat-out heel kicking Garcia in the face and then bent over and offered the guy a free kick at his head. Go ahead, just kick me once, mate. It won't hurt. There's nothing here. And instead, now, Will has been kicking Garcia in the head over and over. And then Will gives Garcia a chance to kick him in the head. And what does he do? He gets up and humps his face. Do you remember when Val Venus humped Steve Austin's face, Brian, on I Raw? I don't think that ever happened, no. No. <clears throat> so at that point, I skipped to the finish because I was tired of tolerating these children and their foolishness. And so basically, Garcia gives Ostrich a, two, a, a pile driver and gets a two count on it. And then as they're rolling up, MJF puts the diamond ring on the mat and tells Garcia, here, Garcia, get it. And Garcia picks it up, and Will rolls him up from behind, and they do about four or five different 
roll-ups back and forth, and then Garcia gives up, or gets gives up. Gets up and gives MJF the ring back. It's like he thinks about, no, I can't. They didn't need the four or five roll-ups, but they can't help themselves. All he needed to do was pick the fucking ring up and be conflicted, and that was what took his eye off the ball. But nevertheless, four or five roll-ups, he gets up, he gives MJF the ring back, and he turns and eats an elbow, one, two, three. And you see this constantly these days, but this was done better than most of the time where they go, oh, I'm so... I'm so torn. Should I do something to this other guy? Stab him with a screwdriver or give him the high colonic or whatever. So anyway, it was done well. And then Garcia was in the corner. And this is the one thing. Brian, did you see? Daniel Garcia is sitting in the corner of the ring and he is crying tears. And Will is giving him a pep talk and then leaves and Garcia is still... What kind of babyface cries when he loses a match? Cry when you win, right? Your family's there, you got the title off. But crying over losing a match. He's a 25-year-old man. What the fuck was that about? Why would... Did, did, I don't know, and it wasn't a world title match. It was a continental title or whatever this is. Well, it doesn't matter. You're a 25-year-old man, and you're crying over losing a wrestling match, and you're supposed to be a babe? That's a heel thing. And George Crybaby Cannon made a living out of that. But a baby face crying? What kind of fucking simpering little pussy are you? That's another reason why this guy ain't gonna get over. Can you see Steve Austin crying? Triple H just beat me with a sledgehammer. Boo-hoo. But anyway, we get to the meat of the matter. MJF picks him up and raises his hand and hugs him and tells him it's okay and then kicks him in the balls. And then he puts the ring on and here comes Daddy Mac and jumps up and boom, he nails Daddy Mac with the ring and nails Garcia with the ring and spits at the crowd, and Garcia's bleeding, and Daddy Mac is bleeding. And here comes the security, and he nails them with the fucking ring, too, and gets more heat on Garcia, and at least we get somebody with some aggression. And he's jumping all over the place, kicking the shit out of people. And he's pissed off, and he's mad. And he's had all he can stands, and he can't stands no more. And then... Yeah, I don't know if this was necessary, but he gives Garcia the tombstone pile driver off the second turnbuckle. I guess it is because even the mascot won't sell one just in the ring anymore. And here comes Christopher Daniels and the rest of the agents and the referees. Daniels has established his presence. Tony Khan has announced decisions earlier in the night through the announcers. But when the buckaroos want to run roughshod, they're, they're in the bathroom. But so anyway, everybody's there. MJF pushes them away. Finally, Willie Boy comes out. And MJF says, come on, come on, and then bails out and says, fuck all y'all, and goes through the crowd and attempts to incite general mayhem and some type of riot. And they get the EMT crew and the doctor and the everybody and put Garcia on a backboard. The backbone goes on a, the backbone, I should say, goes on a backboard. That, so that ought to be a t-shirt, Brian, for the, for MJF. I put the backbone on a backboard. But that way, it, it, it had a lot more life and a lot more energy and the people cared about it a lot more than most of the shit you see on the program because I think down deep, even that they they know MJF needs to be a heel. That this this other stuff wasn't working. It was just a placeholder thing because he was the most popular guy in the company and it wasn't even close and he had nobody on his level to work with.
Are you speaking on mute? No, I was waiting for the oh. gardeners to disappear, oh. but they don't seem to want to leave. But Jim, that means it's time for Brian's thoughts. This is what was needed. It was cathartic in a way <laughs> to watch this. We need heel MJF. As soon as he hit him in the balls, it was like a breath of fresh air. That's the MJF we know and love. Yes. It went pretty far. My biggest issue is that this is all being done with Daniel Garcia. Unless Well, but I mean it, it's it no, it's it's being done with with Willie Boy. That's where they're good. They, it's being done no. with the idea, I think, of elevating Garcia along with the idea of his building up MJF and Osprey. It's not for Garcia to disappear. It's for him to show back up on TV, and eventually he's going to want to get MJF. I I got the idea that Garcia was just the 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 MacGuffin, the tool, the MacGuffin, if you will, to give. Because it, it, where did this come from? Out of nowhere, MJF challenging Garcia, and then Osprey coming in and and upstaging MJF's challenge it, it's mjf and it's osprey garcia is just a ancillary player in this whole evolving situation yeah by the way everyone thought he would probably win the world title because they didn't think they would do the match again at wembley but we'll see swerve won no swerve where's swerve on the show the world champion oh well you know they <laughs> tony has played with him a lot lately he put him back in the chest so he can play with some of the new guys that you know that he's collected that he hadn't got a chance to get a grip on as much lately. The one thing that could help AEW a lot right now is a great heel MJF run. So let's uh, let's hope this is the beginning of that. There was a lot of promise at the end of AEW. We'll see how many people were still there. Again, it was in the middle of a 15-minute overrun. It was the very end of the 15-minute overrun. But this is what is needed. MJF returning back to who he should be. 